What's up guys and welcome back to my channel. One thing I really love is the feedback I get in the comments. And so one of the things that has been said numerous times over my last several videos is can you talk about photography a little more and a little less about gear? And of course, I would love to talk about photography and I recognize that I've been a little gear heavy for the past few months, but that's kind of the world I've been living in. And I'm actually gonna do a video about this gear thing that's been in my head. And it's not gas, gear acquisition syndrome. It's actually been more of like trying to find the right tools for the job, but having a crisis with the job, trying to understand what exactly I'm trying to do in this season and then get the right tools for it. But we're not gonna talk about that today. Instead, I'm gonna roll the clock back and talk about my five favorite photography moments. Not my five favorite photos because I don't know if I could identify my favorite photos that I've taken over the course of my photography journey, but I definitely can identify my five favorite moments. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you these five moments and then I'm going to show you the camera I was using, the lens I was using and what my exact settings were to get the photos that I got here. And what I found really cool and interesting when I was putting this video together was how different everything is today for me. But these are still my top five favorite moments and the photos that accompany them are very special to me. So here we go. Let's take a look at these five moments. Okay, there you have it, my five favorite moments. So let's go back now and revisit them and I'll tell you what the settings were and I've got them pulled up right here. This first shot is from Monument Valley. I didn't have any video of this because back then when I was shooting this, I never shot video outside of just like a vertical story on my iPhone. The camera I was using was the Canon EOS R. The lens that I was using was the Canon 24 to 70 2.8 L Mark II. This was shot at f6.3 at 1 over 250 for the shutter and ISO 100. Almost everything I do has a low ISO because I like the cleanest photo possible. Or at least I used to back when I shot these photos. This next one is of the Watchmen at Zion National Park. This was taken during sunrise, but not right at sunrise. It was taken as I was actually driving back from a sunrise shoot. I just love the way the light was hitting the Watchmen. So I hopped out of the car. I found these pretty yellow flowers and got this shot. This shot is cool because Target actually licensed this photo from me and you can go to your local Target and buy this photo. That's pretty cool. One of the coolest things that has ever happened to me with my photography career. This again was the Canon EOS R. I was on the same trip as the Monument Valley photo. Same lens, the 24 to 70 2.8L Mark II. The aperture was f2.8. This was taken at 1 500th of a second on the shutter and ISO 100. 
Next up, we've got the Snake River Overlook of the Grand Tetons, and this was taken at sunrise. By this point in my journey, I had moved over to Sony, and this shot was taken with the Sony A7R 3 and the 16 to 35 GM. The focal length was 35 millimeters. I shot this at f 3.5, 1 50th of a second. I know, kind of risky. And ISO 100. This next shot was taken up in Canada in Banff of Moraine Lake. This place has been photographed like 1 billion times, but of course I had to get my own shot. This was actually my second or third time at this lake when I took this particular photo. It was an incredible moment. It was a blue hour photo taken before the sun came up. It was shot on the Sony A7R 3 again with the 16 to 35 GM, this time shot at 25 millimeters. It was taken at f2.8 with a shutter of 1 over 100 and ISO was at 125. This final and fifth photo was taken also up in the Canadian Rockies at Jasper National Park at Spirit Island. And this shot was taken in the middle of the afternoon. It was taken on the A7R 3 again, 16 to 35. This one was shot at 30 millimeters. F 6.3, one over 100 and 160 on the ISO. Now I said these were my five favorite moments. Each one of these sunrise stories involved a very early wake up, a drive in the dark, a cold and crisp morning, a little solitude in most of these, but these moments have a story with them and I could go on and on and on about the story that accompanies every photo. But the purpose of this video is not to sit here and tell you my stories, but to encourage you to go out and make your own. We sometimes get in our head as to reasons why we can't do something. For instance, gear. I mentioned earlier that I'm on this like gear season, this gear journey right now. I'm gonna talk about it another time, but gear can make us feel like we don't have what we need to go do the thing we wanna do. But the reality is when you're actually a moment seeker, when you're trying to go have a moment or create a memory for yourself, the gear is actually pretty irrelevant. Every one of these shots was taken on a camera that I have now replaced. Every one of these shots was taken on a zoom lens. I haven't used a zoom lens for my photography in a very long time. In fact, I only have the 16 to 35. That's the only zoom lens I have for my Sony kit and I use it for video 95% of the time and photography like 5% of the time. So the gear doesn't really matter when you're out trying to make a moment because that's not the purpose. The purpose is the moment, the experience, the life that you're living. So don't let the gear you have limit you from making a moment. And that's why it's so important to remember that the gear doesn't make the photo you do. You make the photo. I made these photos. I could have made them with an iPhone. I made them with the cameras that I shared earlier. And nowadays, if I went back to recreate these photos, I would probably take my Leica kit and not this other stuff that I used before. But at the end of the day, I'm the one making the photos. And ultimately, you could categorize all the photography being about moments, but maybe for like commercial work or portrait sessions where you're shooting for somebody else, maybe in a studio, you're doing headshots, like that moment probably doesn't matter that much to you. And that's okay. Let's just say like my personal work is all about moments. Like all of my personal work is about moments. Moments are experiences that mark us. I heard this quote about 15 years ago that said, two things greatly affect the heart, beauty and adversity. And we all live through a lot of adversity. So going into beauty can counter affect the adversity that our hearts deal with. So when you're trying to make a moment, you're actually helping heal your heart when you put yourself and immerse yourself in beauty. Photography helps us recall those moments. When I look at these photos, just as I am right now, I can not only remember the journey and the experience of being in that location or even going to that location, but I also remember how it felt. And I mean that physically, like how the wind felt on my face and cutting through my jacket at Snake River Overlook. It was so cold that morning. I remember the dust getting all my jeans at Monument Valley. I was wearing these black jeans and I was gonna take this shot, like this self shot, where I was gonna go stand on a rock below. And I remember after like getting up off the ground, after taking a few shots low, there was like this red dust all over my jeans and I said I had to brush it off for like five minutes so that I could go take this other photo and not have my jeans be all red. I remember the flowers at 
that photo of the watchman and I remember putting my camera into the flowers and not really being able to see the back of the screen. I remember the smell of wildfire smoke when I was up in Canada and I could smell it. It smelled like a campfire everywhere we went. That was all part of these photos that's in the metadata, but in my metadata. It's what's in here, not what's in the file. All that to say, moments, memories, that's what it's all about. When I'm out on a photo journey, I typically try to pack really efficiently. And today's sponsor of this video has actually solved a problem for me. I typically have like a normal pack load whenever I've got a photography gig or I'm out on a personal project and I'm like traveling location to location and I have like a light mode. So when I'm doing like my full pack mode, I have my laptop, I have my kit and my lenses with me most of the time in one bag and I have that one bag on my back and I go. Then I have like a light mode where I don't take the laptop, I don't take as much kit, and I take my iPad and I use this little guy right here. Well, you know these things right here. This is how I get data into my iPad off the SD card, but it's also prior to having the M1 Max MacBook. It's how I got my SD cards into my computer. And today I still use this for the mic, for like the micro or mini, whatever it is, SD card off of my drone or GoPro or Insta360 or whatever. I use this purely for that reason, just to get that little data off there. And so I do carry this around whether it's in my big kit or my small kit. Then of course I carry around this Pelican case I've had for like, I don't know, gosh, 15 years now. This Pelican case is where I store my SD cards. Uh, I got a few in here right now, but one of the things that drives me crazy about a case like this is that like, the cards can easily fall right out. It's always driven me nuts. And sometimes I'll open this up, especially the smaller cards, like the micro or mini or whatever they're called, SD cards, they fall out of this thing all the time. And so, oh, came and closed it without things falling. But it's been that way for 15 years and you know, you just kind of learn to live with the pain. These two things right here go with me most of the time. And there's a little weight, but not a lot. I mean, you, you see them, but you can see like it's some bolt. This is like out with the old and in with the new. Today's video is sponsored by PGY Tech and their new CreateMate card case and reader. So let's start with this. From here to here. Already, ergonomically, we've made an improvement. But what I love about this little case here is that it is an SD card case that the cards cannot fall out of because they slide in and lock into place. It holds four micro or mini. I don't remember and my brain won't let me remember right now, but the little SD cards, four of them on this side, two full-size cards, flip it over, two more full-size cards, and actually two slots for SIM cards, which, I'm gonna be honest, like it seems like maybe this would have been better used for more of the mini SD cards because everything's going to eSIM now. But I do get why they did this because all over the world, the physical SIM cards are very much still a thing. It comes with a little pin for popping SIM cards in and out. And here's the coolest thing, right? It is not just a case. It is actually a reader as well, which this is like so freaking cool because for someone that uses something like this, only getting data into the computer, this has a pop out USB-C cable that plugs right in to your USB-C on your laptop or your iPad or the iPhone 15 that's gonna be dropping soon is gonna have USB-C and so you can get your cards right in through something as small as this and then it completely folds back in the cable, clamp it shut and you're good to go. This is a CreateMate by PGY Tech. Thank you guys for sponsoring this video. And if you click the link below, you can find this little device and actually be surprised at how inexpensive it is. Cause you would think this would be a little more expensive than what they have it listed for. So good job, PGY Tech. I hope you guys have found this video to be interesting, informative, and inspirational. At the end of the day, if I am not helping you get to where you want to be, then I'm not doing my job. And that would be disappointing because I don't make these videos for me. If you like this video, be sure to share and like and subscribe and all the other YouTube things. And again, guys, thank you so much for supporting this channel, for watching and being part of this journey and community. And I will see you guys next time.